Steven, just uh, give us an update. Uh, I know you're disappointed you couldn't fight Greenville, but you're kind of you know looking out for yourself first and your health and everything. So you know, yeah. we're a little bit past it. Just where do things stand now? Yeah, everything's good, man. Healed up great. I'm actually helping a few fighters right now get ready for their fights. My buddy Carl Reed is going to be fight, fighting in the uh, Contender Series in a few weeks, and uh, I'll be headed out to New York to help Chris Wyman get ready for his fight at 205. So everything's feeling good. Um, back into training hard, full force, and uh, hopefully be fighting again at Madison Square Garden in November is the plan. Don't know who yet, but we'll see. Is there anyone you want? Uh, I know me and RDA are both coming off of a loss, so uh, it might be some time for, good time for him to heal up and maybe make that happen at MSG. So I'll be cool. I know Robbie Lawler's got a fight coming up uh, this coming week, and we'll see how that goes. So, um, yeah, man, somebody, I'm looking at somebody in the top five and uh, um, ready to get back out there and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, he fought a he fought a striker, uh, Leon Edwards, and uh, Leon Edwards made him work, man. Made him work all, all five rounds. So, and Leon Edwards is on a I think seven fight winning streak right now, eight fight winning streak. Wow. So he could be possibly fighting for the title as well. You can relate to that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was I've been there, man. I've been there. So uh, I know everybody's talking, uh, um, you know, um, uh, Masvidal may be getting that next shot, but you know he's he's had. Two wins. His third win, third loss was me uh, in MSG, but uh, I think there's more guys out there more deserving of the title. But you know he's putting on some good shows and knocked out some good people, so you never know. Yeah, you, you know you're playing around in knockout, but did you think of his knockout event? Oh, I, th I thought it was awesome. And, and the funny thing is that you know he planned that, like he he knew what he was doing. You know what I mean? Everybody looked at it, was like, man, that's just a fluke thing. But you know he's got footage of him, uh, you know, doing that in the gym in the octagon, so he knew what he was doing. You ever had that, like whether it was your kickboxing career? Or Oh, 100%. When I fought Johnny Hendricks, actually, um, you know, we knew exactly what he was going to do uh, and during that fight. And, you know, no disrespect to him or, or taking anything, anything away from him, but uh, it was almost easy, to be honest with you, that first round fight. I mean, he knew he was looking to take me down, and we worked my takedown defense, kept the distance. Uh, we knew he was looking for that big one, one, one hitter quitter punch with his right hand. and. Um, just fell into place, man. Everything worked great. Uh, so you said you didn't think uh, Jorge Masvidal might not deserve the title. You said or might not be the most deserving. Who do you think would be some of the most? Deserving? Uh, right now, obviously Leon Edwards. I mean, he's on an eight-fight winning streak. Uh, he's doing very well in the division. So I think at the top, maybe him. I mean, under him could be Masvidal because he's got some great, you know, knockouts of some good fighters. So uh, you know, it really depends on what the UFC and the fans want. You know, and the UFC is kind of. <laughs> going towards of what the fans want now a days. So it could be Masvidal, but I think uh, Leon Edwards has definitely proven he deserves uh, a shot at the title. So what, what would you say if you're Colby Collinson, who was the interim champion, and now he's fighting Robbie Lawler, and he wins and he might not get that title shot again? Well, yeah, there was, a, there was like a, uh, you know, um, the, the, the welterweight division was kind of stagnant there for a little bit because we didn't know who was going to get the next shot. It was kind of boring, the, what, the division, really, because everybody was kind of, there was a holdup. Nobody knew if Robbie was going to, I mean, Colby uh, Covington was getting it, if it was going to be Usman. Now there is a new champion, and, uh, you know, the, welter the welterweight division is kind of coming up now, but uh, he's got, I don't know, man. I don't know what the whole deal was with him fighting for the, for the title. I don't know if he, was, if he was ready for it. I don't know all the ins and outs, but... Uh, you know, if he goes out there and does work uh, against Lawler, he he'll get he'll definitely I, I expect he'll get the shot. So uh, yeah, we, we we'll see next Saturday. <laughs> what do you think uh, Ben Askren's position is in the division? Obviously, that was a pretty devastating loss. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think he's ranked number 10 or 11 right now. He got bumped down. Uh, I know he's, he could be possibly fighting another grappler, uh, Damian Maya, who's very dangerous on the ground. Um, but. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, as at this point, especially in, in this level, um, you got to be very good, very well-rounded, and every fight starts from its feet, on, on its feet. So, and there's some really high-level strikers in this game, as you saw against the Masvidal fight. So, um, I don't know, man. I think I think it's a good fight for him to take against Damian Maya because he's a grappler. Um, Damian Maya's got some hands on him, so we'll see. But uh, um, I don't know. I, I think I got Askren on that fight. I think I got Askren on that fight. What do you think is worse for a fighter? So he obviously got knocked out in five seconds. The thing goes viral, everyone mm -hmm. sees it. But he didn't necessarily show anything because he's lost any step or whatever. Is it worse to lose that quickly or worse to be beaten up for like 14 minutes and then finish? That's a very good question. Very good question. Um, I think for me, it was worse 
with the, the 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 quick one. You know, my last fight with Pettis, I got knocked out in the second round, even though I was winning the fight. Um, I would rather have lost going all three rounds and and have my opponent just outwork me, knowing that I was 100%. You know, I want my opponent if they're going to win, I'm going to be at 100%. Uh, you know, giving it my all. The last fight, it was just one of those fluke shots, you know, and that could happen in, in, with anybody in the division or in this game, you know, as you know. So it makes this game so exciting. So for me, I would rather lose, like, just getting just getting smoked, you know what I mean? Not getting knocked out. Knowing that you were winning, you know, that you, you know, um, that's just me, man. What do you think of how Askren handled that whole situation in the aftermath? It's definitely a pro, man. Definitely a, uh, uh, I, think he, I think he took that loss like a champ, you know, he, uh, he knew what his flaws were. He knew he got knocked out, and he wasn't making any excuses at all. So my hat goes off to him for that, for sure. I mean, he, he took that loss like a champion. So in my eyes, he did the right thing. You mentioned Edwards as being deserving of a potential of a title shot, 8 no streak. Um, do you feel like it's a little bit overlooked, maybe because he fought so much in the UK for so long? Maybe. I think so. Um, I mean, he's, he's definitely defeated some really tough dudes in the division. Um, you know, I think his, his most... Um, awarding one was was definitely this last fight against RDA, who was a top ranked guy. Uh, he oh, and Gunnar Nelson, which I didn't expect that at all. I thought Gunnar Nelson was going to take him down and choke him out, but his takedown defense with that was just amazing. Gunnar Nelson's a very tough guy, so I think those two fights right there should should definitely deserving of a title shot. So I think he was overlooked a little bit because he does a lot of his fights overseas. But um, yeah, man, uh, I, I think um, I don't know who his next guy is going to be, but. Uh, I guess we'll see after the Lawler fight and, and the uh, uh, the Kobe Covington. Maybe he will fight one of those guys next, and then maybe for the title. Could it be said that Leon's been really hard done by because he beat Gunnar, then he gets punched in the head backstage by Masvidal. Yeah. Masvidal's in a better position than him. No. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? That could be an awesome fight too. That would be. A, I think there's because there's some you know there's some some beef there between those guys. That would be a very exciting fight. I would tune in to watch that fight for sure. So if there is a race to that. Uh, for those two, I think maybe those two should should face off to see who who goes up tonight to fight the number one or fight for the title next. So I think it would be a very exciting fight. Where for do you sure. think your buddy Michael Chiesa stands in the uh, dude? Right now? Michael Chiesa is a beast. I mean, I mean, as you saw, I was there sitting cage side against him, facing uh, you know Diego Sanchez. So uh, very tough guy. I think he'll move his he'll, he'll move his way up the ladder very quickly. Uh, some good wins. I know he's looking to maybe to fight um, uh, Neil Magny, which would be a a good fight for the both of them. Um, he definitely has uh, got a bright future in this division for sure. Tonight, uh, Felicia Spencer brings a traditional karate style you know, to the octagon to go against Cyborg's very powerful style. How do you think that's going to match up? I think it's going to be good, man. If she keeps the distance well, uh, I think she's got the, the fight in the bag. Uh, she's just got to watch out for Cyborg's you know, overwhelming power in her size. I mean, she comes forward and she throws hard. So, uh, I mean, that's just devastating for anybody in the division, for sure. But if she keeps the distance, keep use her use her reach, and uh, keeps her at the end of her kicks, I think she can win the fight. One, one final one. You're talking a lot of these. Uh, there's a lot of questions surrounding the welterweight title picture. On the flip side, Bellator put that tournament together, and Rory McDonald's not fighting in the final someone you're familiar with do you prefer that tournament method so like there's a clear winner you can't really argue over who's moving on in that right that is true man i never really thought about it to be honest with you you know they had that welterweight grand prix going on and um that would be cool maybe to see something like that in the UFC. You know, you know what I mean? Get the top top guys, top five maybe, and fight them down to one, and that one fights for the title. And 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 uh, it was crazy because I was at the Bahamas not too, uh, you know, a few weeks back, and I'm sitting there in in the hotel going, they have a big, uh, you know, uh, uh, aquarium. And I'm looking, I'm looking over there in the in the shadow, and I see this guy looking at me, and he comes out of the light, and it's it's uh, Lima. I'm like, what's up, man? Dude's a big dude, bro, big guy, I and mean, he only lives like two hours away from me. But um, yeah, man, decided to go on a little vacation before he actually goes back and starts getting ready for that fight. I think he's fighting uh, Rory next, right? Yeah, for the, for the finals. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, it's going to be a good one. I can't wait to watch that one because you know, just me, you know. Uh, Knowing both of these guys, Lima lives two hours away from me, so we kind of know each other through those small circles of the smaller MMA uh, fights. And facing Rory McDonald, knowing him for a long time, and that last fight that they had, you know, Rory took a ton of punishment, ton of punishment, especially with his legs and calves, taking those low leg kicks. I think it's going to be a good one, man. I'm excited to watch that one.